Hi everyone, it's Carrie B with Blooms and Bubbly, and I am coming to you with another video on how you can arrange roses. So I'm really excited because tonight I am attending a virtual dinner party. How exciting, right? So, you know, I just posted on my blog a um, blog post about 15 things that you can do while we are at home. Uh, and uh, so check it out at CarrieB.com. And um, so one of the things that I suggested was having a virtual dinner party. And so, you know, I have to practice what I preach. So I was really excited when my girlfriend uh, invited my husband and I to a virtual dinner party. And so whenever I think about a party, one of the first things I think about is flowers. So um, I splurged a little and I went to um, Bristol Farms Market and I picked up some really beautiful long stem roses. So you can see how beautiful all of the different colors. Um, I think I'm trying to remember the name of this one. It reminds me of Sunset. Um, and so I will uh, look up the name, but aren't they beautiful? It just makes you think of a sunrise or sunset. So um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to do a, um, how to arrange roses. Um, so just simple roses, no other greenery, um, nothing else, and just an idea of a way that you can make roses by themselves look great. So one of the first things that you want to do when you get your roses is you want to condition them. And, and what that means is you want to remove um, any, and I have a trash in here, so you want to remove um, the leaves, any dead leaves. You want to remove any um, thorns or any petals that look um, a little weak. And you can actually use, I like to use this rose stripper, and this is really good to strip away any thorns. And then what you want to do is give it a um, fresh cut on a diagonal, a 45 degree angle, and then let them drink in like lukewarm water for as long as you are able to. It's great if they can drink um, overnight, but um, in this case, I didn't really have time to buy them yesterday. So I'm going to um, just actually arrange them um, for tonight. But it's really great if you can let them sort of condition for several hours. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just going to go through, and again, I'm using my rose stripper, and I'm just going to remove any thorns, give it a nice cut, and let them drink, okay? So I'm gonna stop the video right there uh, and just kind of time lapse this because I'm gonna go through all of these roses and you'll see, so I'll, you'll see the Now that the roses are all clean, now what I'm going to do is a technique um, that's really making sort of an English bouquet. And it's just sort of making that spiral, that nice dome spiral look for the roses to all be bunched together. It'll remind you of, you know, a flower girl holding flowers or a bride. So it gives that nice sort of dome, round, tight shape that is really nice um, to hold as a bouquet or to put in, um, this is the vase that I'm gonna use, this um, sort of low bubble vase. I chose this one because for a dinner party, um, it's really nice to have something that's low so people can have conversation. And even though it's a virtual dinner party, um, we'll have the um, computer screen in front of us. So I wanna be able to have the flowers there. You can still see the flowers in our faces. So I'll be making sort of a lower centerpiece type. So um, what I'm gonna show you is the um, sort of a spiral uh, method. And the way that works is, so after your roses are all clean, you're gonna make um, a, a spiral. And the way you do that is you start with one and it's just a crisscross method. And you're gonna take the next one, cross it over, and then you're gonna give it a spin. You're gonna take the next one, 
in the same direction, cross it over, give it a spin. You take the next one, cross it over, give it a spin. You take the next one, cross over the same direction, give it a spin. And as you can see, what it's doing is starting to make just a nice little crisscross dome. And what you can do is you can adjust the roses so that they are all the same height. And you just cross and twist, cross, same direction and twist. And then you make adjustments. Okay, so you can see how that's coming out. A nice spiral. And uh, you just adjust them. And then I'm going to go again. Cross and twist. Cross, same direction, and twist. And again, I'm going to make an adjustment. Making sure all my roses are at the same height. And then I've got two more. I'm going to cross and twist, and then the last one, cross and twist. So with that, I'm just now going to work on my shape. I want to have sort of a round shape, so I'm just adjusting them the way that I would like, looking at them, making sure that my sizing is right. Look how nice that looks. So that already looks like a bouquet that you would hold. So again, I'm just working on the shape now, making sure that they're all nice and tight and nobody's hanging out too high up. Okay. So now, once you get the shape that you want, you notice that I'm holding them very tightly uh, right there at the pressure point. And you can see how they've sort of spiraled off. So what you want to do now is you want to actually tie them off. And I like using a paddle wire because it can get really tight with the paddle wire. You can also use twine or string, but the main thing is, is you want to make sure it's nice and tight. So what I did is I just cut a piece of paddle wire and at the tension point, I'm going to, uh, wrap around, okay, and I'm sort of pulling it, right, pulling it, and then what I'm going to do is I'm grabbing this and I'm actually going to spin the roses so that it will make a nice, tight gathering. So I spin that several times, and then I'm just going to kind of wrap, and then I'm going to go back and make sure they're still okay. All right, and then I'm just going to tie them off. So I'm going to take this and sort of wrap it again a couple of times. And this is something that you can really practice and get good at. I've been doing this a lot, but I still have to practice sometimes to make sure. But the main thing is you want to make sure that it's nice and tight. Okay, so... Uh, and you don't want to, you know, you're not trying to make it to the point that you break it, but you want to, you do want to make sure it's nice and tight. Okay. So once you have that, you can sort of then tie it off. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of make a little knot and twist it. And then I'm going to cut off the excess. Okay. And I have made my bouquet. Okay, so now what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the height is at what you want, right? So for this particular arrangement, I wanna make sure that the flowers are sitting just, um, and I wanna make sure I, you can see, I want the flowers to sit just above, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm setting it at the edge and I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I want to cut them. So I think I'm gonna cut here. And remember, it's always good if you, uh, if you cut them too long, you can always trim again. But if you cut them too short, then that's just it. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna cut them. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to uh, cut the center one 
just a little bit shorter in the center, just a little. Okay. And if I have done my spiral well, they should be able to stand up on their own like that. Okay. So that's when you know your spiral is okay. All right. So what I'm going to do, and I think it could actually even be a little tighter. You can see that coming loose a little bit. So just for security's sake, I'm actually going to put a little more wire, a little higher up because I could tell when they stood up that it was a little, little looser than what I wanted it to be. So I'm just going to go back again and make sure it's really tight. And again, like I said, just to make sure that I'm getting the effect that I want with this. Okay. So again, you can practice this technique, you know, making this um, spiral. Um, you know, you can take it apart and try again if it doesn't come out. It's very forgiving. Thank goodness. Okay. All right. So I think that's a little tighter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put some water in my vase. Okay. Pretty good amount. About a little more than halfway. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my roses in and see the height. Okay, so you can see right now that the height is a little tall, which is fine because again, if it's too tall, you can always cut it shorter. So I want to go a little shorter. So I'm just going to put them back together and try to cut them a little bit shorter. And these are flying everywhere. I'll have to pick those up. <laughs> and the main thing is you want to make sure that there are no leaves in the water. So I'm just going to pull off. There are a few leaves that might be in the water because it, when you have leaves in the water, that's what causes that bacteria. So you want to have a nice clean stem. Let's see how that goes. All right. That is much better. Okay. Um, it's still tilting a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it a little bit more. I'm so, I have, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> I want them to sit perfectly. So I'm just going to cut them again and again. It's always better to start high and go low because you can't go the other way. So I'm going to take off a few more of these leaves. Okay, and let's see how we do. Ah, that's what I wanted. I really wanted them to sit on the lip of the vase. And so that's what I was able, the effect that I was able to get. Okay, so this is how you can arrange a simple dozen of roses in a vase. Um, it just looks elegant and simple, and it'll be great for our virtual dinner party tonight. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this episode, I guess I'll call it, of Blooms and Bubbly. So I'm Carrie B. Um, for more information and tips, on my blog or YouTube channel, go to carriebee.com. Thanks for watching.